Greetings, my friends. Welcome to another episode of the Maybe Pile podcast, hosted by me, Kiryoku Writes, and my friend, Mummified Tony, or just Tony. Tony, how are you doing this wonderful evening? I am doing all right. You know, uh, getting back in the saddle again, wanting to make sure that we get we stay on this and deliver a positive, well, lovely podcast for all the world to enjoy. Yes, yes. So, bit of a boring past couple of weeks. For you. I guess a few more ahead. For me, yeah, for me. I've mostly been engrossed in my writing and other things and attempting to push something, anything out, but mm-hmm. unfortunately I've only managed very, very little, but I'm still trying and I think that's the point. Yeah. Knowing that, you know, it's like you have all this time to essentially write all you want and trying to get it done as best as possible, you know, trying to trying to keep busy, you know? You know it. So you said it wasn't it was not a boring couple weeks for you so far. How have you been? What have you been up to? Well, there there's been a whole transition with me now working from home and, you know, setting up uh computers last week and getting my life all kind of rearranged and figured out. I um I got set up with a uh home computer from my work that now I since now I'm working from home. Uh, during these times, uh, I now have four monitors on my desk and I was like, okay, this is going to be way overcrowded on my, um, on my computer. So, uh, I ended up doing the quad monitor. I'm doing a quad monitor, even though technically it's technically it's two computers with two monitors each, but I had to pick up a four monitor stand that allows me to have all four of them in front of me. And along with that, I made a first purchase in a while that I actually, um, is for me, no, so to speak. Um, and that's a microphone stand that does the whole like bendy arm thing. Kind of like the, um, kind of the same one that everybody has. Oh yeah. I have the same one. I don't know if you have like, I don't know what brand you have, but I have like the newer, literally brand name is newer arm, mic arm. That's what I have. Honestly, I love the thing. I just have it, like, jerry-rigged to my little fold-out table that I use as a desk. <laughs> and, and it holds just fine. I was, like, so afraid that when I tightened it, it would, like, fall off or fall apart or something. But no, it's actually holding really, really firm, and I, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, um... I I was trying to... Uh, I, I, there's a... There's a difference between the two different products that I bought. My uh, microphone stand and the monitor stand. The, the microphone little arm thingy I have cost maybe like 20 bucks to 20 bucks on Amazon versus the monitor stand was around $80. So I'm like, there, there's a great difference in like the two different build qualities. And the monitor stand is like out of like solid metal that screws into other metals and locked down with tiny Ooh. screws and everything's like, uh, nothing on this thing is going to move wo- wobble or anything while the, um, uh, arm that I got for my microphones, like, yeah, I think, I mean, it, it does the job. It's not moving, but it's just kind of like, I guess you, you breathe on it wrong. It just like falls over. Yeah. I'm worried. I'm just like, Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> just looks a little weird. Oh man. Yeah. So, uh, that, that's, it, whatever, as long as it holds and it doesn't like fall apart at an important time, oh, I guess no. you'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, and it should work. I mean, I have no questions about its ability to do the job. It's just, uh, you know, there's a difference in the things, you know. Right. Oh man. So, uh, I guess only one of the things I've done is I designed a couple more pieces of jewelry. So that's kind of cool. Nice. Nice. Still struggling to find a manufacturer. That's the problem. That's the problem. You can, I mean, you can draw and have your artists draw, you know, until your bank account's at zero. But the problem is, is like actually getting somebody to make the physical product. That's the problem. Yeah, it's ugh. Uh, being able to ship out and find vendors and, or not vendors, uh, manufacturers and Yes, it's, that's the issue. I mean, it's not even hard. I don't really think it's that difficult to find people to sell your stuff. It's just hard finding people to make it. That's all. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, because yeah, I have like a necklace and a ring, and I have like another couple of rings I want to make or des- have designed. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have like this really, really good idea that I've wanted to do for like a couple of weeks now. Yeah. And I'm really hoping that I get a few extra dollars in the meantime so I can have one of my artists do it. Nice. So that'll, I think that'll look really cool. No spoilers though, no pictures. I need to protect my property. <laughs> I need to protect I need to I need to guard this shit with my life. I need to I need to protect my uh my creations. Well, yeah. Next thing you know, it's like, yeah, you know and then you're like, well shit. <laughs> yeah, that that would suck ass. But no, as of right now it's okay. So uh yeah, so I don't really you know what you know what, I got like a I seem to have hit like a creative block. Yeah. I may as I may as well tell it how it is. You know, there's no I pride myself on not fucking lying, so I may as well not fucking lie. I have a little bit of a creative block right now. I have uh I want to make like a comic something short and simple, not overdone like my other stuff, something that I don't have to take overly serious like my other stuff. So I I, I tend to uh take my work really really seriously because i hate watching dramas unfold but apparently i'm decent at writing it that's what people tell me i guess they're like yeah this is really good and i'm like yeah but it's drama i'm not really all that great with it and i usually try to make it a little light with some comic relief and the comic relief falls flat or it's cliche Mm -hmm. or it's like or it's like too it's too funny as it not as in too funny as it, I'm just that good as in too funny as it takes away from the moment. Right. It's not, it's not, it's taking away from the severity of the situation. Yeah. It's not going to be, it's not going to be the funniest shit you've ever seen in your life. It's just funny as in to the point where, why would you add that after that? Mm-hmm. You know, whatever. It's like somebody just fucking died, and like two seconds later, you have somebody like rolling on the floor laughing, and it's like, it doesn't really work. No. I mean, in certain circumstances, it would, but not mine. Right. So, but I I wanted to do something that was a little lighter, so I wanted to try a comic or something, Mm -hmm. but this is the problem that I always find. I don't know if I've talked about it already here. But I always get too serious with my stuff. I start writing this this light character, and it's it, I get I get too involved in it, so to speak. I get too deep, mm-hmm. so I get too much information for a com- for a single comic panel to to take. Right. And you're, you know I'm, I don't I don't know how to do it. You're what a writer, it? not a comic. No, I'm not a comic writer. Hell no. Even though I wanted, I don't want to write comics. I'm not a Stan Lee. But uh, I do want to try and get something out that's simple, that's mm-hmm. easier, S- more more simple to do than pitching a full fledged animated series, which is proving to be rather difficult. But with the right people, it's happening, which is great. Right. But uh, you know, when you're trying to when you're trying to do something just to keep the creative gears. Uh, turning creative stuff flowing whatever you want to say turning flowing whatever fuck it mm-hmm. uh when, when you just want to keep that stuff going it's it's just really hard when you want to do something small i can't do small very well so that's where my block is coming from right now i'm stuck trying to figure out okay what can i do with all of this all of the stuff i want to do and i've gone through no less than six comic ideas that have made it to paper you know, I've I've written them down. I've written like a couple of issues for two of them. I think I've gotten I've gotten as far as two issues on my Keltex documents or Keltex folders or whatever. I've gotten pretty far on a lot of these, but they just get too serious or uh, too much information is needed, or they have too much build up and not enough of a result. You know, so it's it's really difficult for me to do that stuff. So that that's what I'm currently running into. I have like this idea, it's new, it's fresh, and I want to try it out. So as soon as we're done recording here, I'm going to go into Keltex. I'm gonna try and write this one out, playing characters, uh like not boring, but characters that don't need like three pages worth of introduction. Right. You know. 
so uh, that's that's currently me. What are what are you uh, what, what are you up to? Yeah, I I don't know. I uh, I I kind of want to I kind of want to touch on that a little bit. I mean, it, you can. Is it? Do you find that your when you're saying that you're writing three pages of things for a character, do you feel like there that? I mean, just from my outside perspective, to me that would sound like you're like dumping too much exposition. Can is there a way that maybe you could find a way to more sprinkle this information along or that's what I have to try. That's what I have to try. Now, I'm not going to just snap my fingers and erase mm-hmm. that information that that character is attached right, to. No, no. No. It will come out, <clears throat> sorry. It will come out at some uh-huh. point. It's kind of going against the way I was taught. I was taught to, you know, when you're when you're writing a full series, you have to write a, a pitch Bible or a show Bible, right. whatever you call it. You have to write one of those. And it's, it has, you know, you're, that's that's where you're dumping all of this exposition. Oh, okay. So that way the studios who, you know, the studio people who read it, you know, approve, deny, mm-hmm. whatever, they read through the characters, what they're like, what their goals are and stuff like that. So that's what I find myself doing. Mm-hmm. And when I try to get away from that, I do a little bit of... I try to do a little bit of an introductory scene for them, but I don't know how to do that in a comic book type of way. It's like, how many panels does it take? How much dialogue can I squish into a single panel without it being mm-hmm. too much? How big are the text bubbles supposed to be? How many words go inside of them? How many panels is one page? How many panels mm-hmm. is an issue? Whatever. Whatever. You know, uh, it's it's stuff like that that I'm trying to that I'm trying to tackle. Hmm. And uh, oh, okay. Know. Because no, uh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, like with uh, with with comics, it's they're simpler. They're they're more easy. They're more easy and simple to put out. They're easier. Uh, but it's <laughs> for me, they're not. <laughs> Because I want to do all of this, all of this grandiose ex- expositions and these uh, really, really, uh, f- I guess you could say these introductory scenes with like some type of flair and stuff like that. Which, for some reason, that's always been how I did my writing, my storytelling. I have, I have a lot of flair, a lot of uh, finesse, if you will. You know, uh, a lot of people would say over the top, mm. but. That's just the way I do it. So I need to try and condense that. Yeah, I I really wish I had like some way of like being able to help or point you in the right direction. But when it comes to writing, I feel like I just absolutely have nothing that I can at all offer in these in the situations. So best of luck. Well, I mean, uh... <laughs> that means that means that means more to me than not doing or saying anything. So. Yeah, it's better than nothing. He's just telling me good luck. It's better than <laughs> nothing. So yeah, uh, but you know, it's 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 a challenge. But you know, I need to learn how to, I need to learn how to uh, over overcome those mm-hmm. little barriers that I've set for myself. I didn't expect to be writing comics. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect to be writing at all. I went to college to become a business mm-hmm. manager. I didn't go to college for writing. Yeah, I just I was driving to I was driving to the college one day, and uh, all of a sudden I was like, "That's mm-hmm. kind of a cool story idea in my head," and I I went to the college, did my first class, and uh, as soon as that class was done, I had like you know three hours between classes, so I went to the library, and three hours later I puked up like ten maybe twelve pages of pure shit, but it was. Okay. It was shit, nonetheless. All right. It, w- it, it you Meaning were putting it, it stuff to paper there. at least. So. Mm. Yeah. And let me say, those twelve pages were a hell of a lot mm. longer than any assignment I ever mm. did. You couldn't get me to sit down and write a twelve-page, uh, like, uh, fucking science report or something. Well, shit. I guess that <laughs> the, one of the things that I've uh, I've learned from myself in writing yeah, and all weird. that. Is that, you know, the difference between me being able to write, you know, homework reports or whatever, you know, crap that I just don't care about versus the stuff that actually is about a topic or about a subject or about 
some story I'm trying to put out there. Um, definitely, you know, has two greatly different feels to it. You know, I have, I have my own, you know, thoughts and ideas and whatnot that I want to sort of get out there with, you know, my fiction writing versus like the nonfiction for, for, you know, half the crap I had to do in high school, you know, um, Oh, I no. think yeah. I think I've no. I wasn't trying to make a comparison. I was just you know. I think I've almost like quadrupled the amount of writing that I've done outside of uh, outside of education versus what I was actually doing inside uh, the schooling sector. It's like great. I have to write five pages. Okay, here's five pages and nothing more. Versus you know when I went off and found out about yeah. NaNoWriMo and you know sort of not perfecting or even like getting to a point where I, uh, I don't know. I'm not saying that like I'm a good writer, but being able to establish my writing ability and whatnot and being able to, uh, sort of go through the process of slipping into a writer mindset and just going for it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I I can totally get behind that. Yeah. I don't know. I got nothing. I mean, it's fine. I mean, you know, what you said, it rings true. You know, it's, you know, whenever you just, I don't really have anything to add to it because you pretty much summed that, you summed that little point of yours up just fine. Sure. I don't mean little point, but you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Is it a little point, Kay? Is that what I am? <laughs> Nothing but little points to you? Okay. It was a big point. All right. Oh, okay. I am so off tonight. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so off. I'm so slow tonight. Damn it. I keep like fucking everything up. <laughs> yeah. At least I didn't it, fuck up a, the recording. It's a, it's a weird mentality that a lot of people have been in. And I got to believe that a lot of, um, people are sort of like thrown out of their natural elements and whatnot. Uh, so speaking of natural elements, movies or, or the lack thereof, I guess. Damn it. I was going to say, I don't um, dare ask you what movies you've seen because we don't really seem to be going out and watching any at the moment. I can't even remember what the last um, movie I actually went out and saw was. I want to say... The one in theaters? <sighs> yeah, a movie actually in theaters. Let me pull up my AMC real quick Back and see what day. I last saw. Yeah. Okay. So then I... The last movie I actually saw in theaters, and actually was a movie that I saw sometime between our last episode and this episode was the Pixar movie onward actually. Yeah. The, um, story of the two brothers who use the crystal and they bring back like just their dad's legs. Yeah. Um, God, that was just a really, really good movie. Like, okay. So the premise is that it follows a, um, young elf, let me let me at least get the IMDb open here real quick. I can't just so remember if you talked about there. this already. I don't think Did I have. Reco- is this the last recording, or is this the first recording? I mean, after we talked to Igor. Uh, no, unfortunately uh, not. Um, there is one episode that we did after. Um, that. Right, and uh, for those of you who may who may be wondering where the hell is it, if you're watching as of. Uh, three thirty one twenty twenty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the last. Yeah, if you're watching the last day of March when we're recording this one right now, uh, we've had a little bit of an audio snag with the My Little Ties episode, so we're cur- that's currently, according to Tony here, being re-rendered and will be up next. There is currently two hours and twenty two minutes and forty seven seconds left of the re-render of episode eight. Uh, we did have an episode nine that happened. Just before this. Right. And I think you yeah. talked about Onward onward in that episode, but I don't know for sure. I don't I don't think I did. Did I did I talk about how uh, like metal it was and really like full of fantasy and goodness? You know, I, I don't know because I've seen like a, I've I've seen a lot of people talk about it, so I don't I'm kind of I don't know if I'm getting them confused with I don't know if I'm getting like all the all the re- all the reviews like confused with what we've talked about. I don't know because because I, I saw know. it on March eighth. Oh. When did we record uh, with uh, Igor? I uh I don't think it was on the eighth. Was it? Is there? 
Are there dates on the audio files? <laughs> Wait, okay, hold on, hold on. This whole thing will probably be clipped out of it, but um, go to the... and see what date he uploaded it at. Can't Point seem fixed. to load my apps. Oh, for cloud. Maybe pile Google Drive. Here we go. What day did he upload at? Um, ah, he uploaded it on February 18th. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, we should talk about it. Uh, okay, so the what? episode we recorded on February 18th is just going up tonight on on March 31st. God. Head pats. God, I am just terrible at this. No, you're not. Yeah, Stop yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to try to kick my uh, workflow up a little bit more and try to make this all work a little bit better. Um, all right. Anyway, so no, the uh, and then episode nine was uploaded on March 3rd by you. Your audio was uploaded right. on the third. I saw the movie on the eighth. So no, I we get to talk, talk about, about this it. Got there in the end. So um, the story follows um, Ian Lightfoot, uh, a elf kid, teen, adolescent, whatever. Um, and his older brother, Barley Lightfoot, played by Tom Holland and then Chris, Chris, Chris Pratt, respectively. Um, and the, 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 the back of the tongue, tip of the teeth. Um, and <laughs> sort of, it, it's Tom Holland's character, Ian's, uh, some odd birthday. I can't remember. I think he's turning 16 or whatever. And, um, he's all like being a teenager and awkward and nervous and whatnot. So it's like, okay, well, cool. I guess it, we're going to have that sort of teen high school situation. And it's like, hey, and he's going to school and he's like, Ugh, I gotta I wanna be more like dad and be more spontaneous. Or let me let me back up a little bit. Um, he's being raised by his widowed I guess widowed, but they never actually say how. Um uh, mom, uh, played by Julia Louise Dreyfus from Seinfeld fame. Um, and then um her her husband and their dad has long passed and he didn't know um his dad very well but his older brother definitely did and he kind of had a relationship with her as, with their dad and whatnot and now um and he's kind of like well i never got to know my dad at all and he runs into a couple of people who did know his dad so he's like kind of emboldened to be more like his dad be more funny be more you know wackadoodle kind of i don't know not like crazy or but like just you know kind of weird it was mentioned at the beginning that it's like oh yeah and he he used to wear like these crazy purple socks and it's like what why did he do that i don't know he was he was just weird like that and apparently he was a bad dancer and whatnot and he was just kind of one of those happy-go-lucky kind of guys hmm. well tom holland's character ian is very like reserved and sort of timid so he's sort of like trying to use his dad's um memory to like like i said embolden him to like be more you know kooky and fun and adventurous so while his older brother that's it kind of been revealed that he his older brother brad uh, barley is since graduated from high school um his mom makes an offhand comment about this being a gap year and whatnot and um he he's sort of wrapped up still not necessarily like still being a kid but being able to uh, like still invested in all this like fantasy stuff and um, about how there used to be magic in the world and we used to have wizards and dragons and things and blah, 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 yada, yada in this world. But as like electricity developed and we invented more things, we kind of like this world sort of slowly settled into a more, um, you know, more like our world, like, you know, cars right. and theaters and movies and TV and, you know, junk like that. Okay. Um, and Ian's all uh, Ian like just completely doesn't have time for this. He's sorry. I had to adjust my mic there. Uh, Ian just doesn't have time for all this. He's like, Oh, my older brother is an idiot. Well, he never says that, but he kind of is like, all right, eh, sure. Whatever you say, uh, Barley, I'm, I'm just gonna 
go on, move on without you. And he'd always be like, ah, you know, being silly and fan- fanciful and being like, no, this is our history. And uh, we need to remember who we were and blah, 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 yada, right. yada. Huh. Um, and then it's revealed, like, the the kid has a bad day at school. He comes back. His mom's all like, well, I was going to save this for the party, but uh, it's something your dad wanted, uh, wanted you guys to have on your, I don't know, 16th birthday or whatever. And it's like, okay, cool. And then hands it. And he's like, Oh, do you know what this is? And it's like, what is it? It's like, it's a wizard staff. Oh, dad was a wizard. Oh, this is so cool. And it, they, they find out that apparently there's a um, gem that, allows him to come back to life for one whole day or until like the following day's sunset. And they, they try, they fail. Um, Ian's all like, well, whatever, I guess we'll, we'll try some other time. Maybe we can figure it out later. And then like later he tries and uh, sort of by himself in his room and they, uh, long story short, hijinks ensue and they actually only summon their, um, their dad's legs from like the belt down and it's like oh no we got to find another one of these crystals so then sort of in in enacting what is it uh call to action there it is the call to action for the story is they have to go off and find this uh phoenix fire crystal to then uh bring back their or finish the spell to help you know so they can hang out with their dad and they go on this big long epic quest to um oh <laughs> something beeped and i was like what was that <laughs> squirrel uh but no they go on this big long epic quest to then go retrieve the crystal so they can uh spend time with their dad and it, it's actually really good like um it it's obviously a kids movie so it it does follow a couple of like the little tropes and whatnot of yeah, they got to go here. They got to have this thing. There's got to be like two or three beats that happen before they hit their right. uh, standard breakup, right. whatever. No, this is how you really feel. I knew it and kind of moment. Yeah. And, you know, it's like we, we harped on that back when we were talking about Sonic. But honestly, the absence of it is neat. But when they actually do it, I don't know. It's like it. I don't know. It, it's weird how this is the trope that I'm going so, so back and forth on whether or not it actually matters because the sort of fall from grace or whatever that, whatever the actual name right. for that moment is. I don't know what it's called. It, it kind of needs to happen. Really. And and the moment where that that sort of you know ha- that inciting moment or whatever in this movie happens is actually kind of nice and sort of what is it It, in most stories it's the moment where the hero suffers his greatest failure before the final battle and and it's like i don't know it it sort of does help the story because you ha- you can't just have all build 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 boss battle end of game. You have to have storyline that actually does for a moment strip the character, take him down a peg for a second, make him question whether or not he can actually do this and then uh back back up from there, you know? Give him a little human moment. Yeah, and and I guess without giving too much away this story the story definitely gives that and the outcome after that fact is heightened because of that because you do have that bit of a downer moment where you're like oh all right whatever fine we're gonna have this argument or whatever or i'm gonna have a moment of uh whatever and it's like oh okay cool i guess and then the sort of the sun that comes up after that storm theoretical is that much brighter than the day just before hmm. okay oh hey great Delisle was in this who's that uh great Delisle is actually a pretty <laughs> if you have ever heard a or ever listened to a sh- anything with kind of a mean bossy lady in it like a eh, younger lady girl it's probably her oh ah, okay 
um, Ahsoka. Not Ahsoka. What am I talking about? Yeah, no. What's the name of the of what's his name sister in um, the Fire Princess in Avatar? Azula. Azula, Ahsoka. Jesus, what's wrong with me? Azula. Um, am I thinking of the right person? Yeah, great allowed. Yeah, okay, good. I am thinking of the right person. Okay, right, so cool. it was like she was huge in like the '90s and uh, pretty much has been in a million different things. Like StarCraft II, she plays Nova. She's played Wonder Woman in a bunch of different things. She's, uh, like I said, she did um, the Fire Princess in Azula. Um, Azula in Avatar: The Last Airbender. I think she did Vicky in no, not Vicky. I can't remember. But she's just done so many different things. She did uh, no, she did Lee Ming in um, uh, World of Warcraft, the okay. uh, panda character girl. Um, she's just been in so many different things. Like it, just go look up her IMDb. It goes on for like miles. Off topic, but it was kind of funny because uh, for some reason I have a friend who just likes to look up random facts, and one of the things he looked up was uh, Troy Baker's, or was it Nolan North? He looked up their, one of their IMDB pages, and we sat there for like 30 minutes while he uh, listed off every single every single uh, franchise or every single uh, movie, game, whatever that mm. he was a part of. It was yeah, um, Nolan North is just in fucking everything. Like, uh, he was, yeah. it wouldn't have taken so long, but we stopped him like every other, every other project to ask what specific part he played in. <laughs> He's just like, oh yeah, he did this. Wait, what was he in that? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> that's exactly what we did. We, he, he was like, yeah, he was in, he, he was in this pause. Who was he? You know, so that's what took us like a half hour. John Wick Hex. Uh, yeah, it was pretty good shit oh i didn't know there was a john wick video game huh a john wick video game oh what video game? yeah apparently it's called john wick hex really and i and i, and I was, saw that and i'm like is that like a john wick huh. uh, john wick jonah hex crossover i was like what apparently john week john week I don't know. again another movie is- i wasn't saying john wick is weak i was just saying john week is in just a really weird way to say wick yeah I've never seen the John Wick films. Same, and I hear amazing things about it, and I definitely need to get on it. Yeah, so I hear Keanu Reeves is really great. Yeah, apparently he like actually as John Wick. Really great. Apparently he actually does really, really like um, uh, guns, and he actually you know is really good at them. That's cool. I'm like, oh, good for him, dude. Well, apparently he says he's willing to make as many John Wick films as the fans want. So good for him, <laughs> as long as the money's there. <laughs> Hey man, it's the best motivator in the world. Right. So anyway, you know it. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, along with having to set up, uh, set up these dang computers for my remote access, I've I've been trying to find ways to like, Sorry. I've been looking for any way that I could possibly like keep myself busy uh, during these times. I mean, I'm my two main things that I did in the uh, did in the week was go to work and come home and sleep. Practically is what I felt like. I right. never like really went out and did much before, but now that I'm like even more resigned to my uh, home life, I've been fi- trying to find like other things that I could possibly do. Right. Um, one of which is when I swung swung by my uh, parents' house the other day is I actually picked up my um, old Xbox 360 Ooh. and my Wii U and got those hooked up properly. Nice. I uh, I was uh, quite pleased about that because i'm like ooh, 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 yes let's do this so when i actually um uh so when i actually got my 360 like hooked up and plugged back in and i plugged in the uh, plugged in the ethernet cable and i'm just like ooh, this is gonna be so good and i got it plugged in and uh huh. and i was like i turned it on and i'm like okay update number one update number two all right i'm in and it was just like oh all these old games I had, and I'm like, oh, I've got Symphony of the Night. I forgot about that. And it's like, oh, I've got Castle Crashers. And I'm like, yeah, I also have Castle Crashers on my computer as well. But it's just like, hey. I updated my uh, Xbox Live account. I, I I changed my gamer tag again. Oh, it was so good. That's awesome, though. That's awesome. Yeah. And I played uh, Banjo Tooie for about 
two hours last night. I'm just like, yeah. I'm like, yes, God, this level. That's amazing. Yeah, I know. I've been eat four things: eat, sleep, game, and write. Nice. I've been because one of my friends recently got his internet back because he's been. Well, he, he's been going off of phone Wi-Fi, like phone hotspots for forever, practically. So he's just nice. now got his PlayStation Plus back and he's got his, uh, well, home Wi-Fi back. So he doesn't have to rely on his hotspot anymore. So mm-hmm. I uh, I did that and we started getting back on GTA GTA 5 online and we started doing stuff like that. And uh, it's kind of scary how fast we've become at certain things because we... Because, uh, we, we're grinders. We are very much hardcore grinders. We, uh, we've never spent a single dime on the game except for the $60 that we spent to buy it. So every single right. thing that we have in that game, we have grinded the money out for. And we've never, we've never once touched a shark card because fuck those things. Oh, God, yeah. Especially in GTA money. It's gone the second you get it. It is gone. Mm-hmm. So what we did was, uh, we have like uh, large warehouses where you you know you you fill them up and then you sell them off whatever, and uh, right now we're gearing up for this really really big sale because we have all of the businesses we have all of the biker businesses a nightclub a bunker uh, an air freight hangar and five large uh, oh. CEO special cargo warehouses in the game, and uh, we're going to sell all of them at once for both of us. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of sales, but it makes a lot of fucking money. And uh, usually it would take us around a week, you know, just of on and off gaming, around a week to fill up five those five warehouses. We did it in two and a half days. So we managed to condense like a week's worth of late night gaming sessions into two and a half days of gaming. <laughs> and it's kind of weird how fast we've become at this and how much time we have in our hands now. That we're just able to just sit down and do this. And it's like, yeah, we're done. <laughs> so now I'm ready to sell. And I'm currently helping him fill up. So I can help him sell as well. Yeah. They were just sitting there like... Are, are we sure that we got it all? Are we missing anything? But no, everything's full. <laughs> it's whatever. Just We're just grinders. That's all we are for that bunch of fucking sandwiches that's all you are to me Kay. you're nothing but a dirty sandwich (laughs) you make me hungry uh i don't think i've ever had that effect on another person (laughs) i could go for a sandwich right about now oh my god so all right so i i have been so forced out of my comfort shell when it comes to like they pick up to cook Ugh, fine. Well, I, I guess I'll suffice with just this. I never thought I would have to make the decision on whether or not I would want to pick up sour cream or chocolate milk. Because when like when stores start like shutting down, like okay, you can only have one dairy item. I'm like, what? There, there was a store I went to that was like, okay, limit one dairy item per household, and I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's what it is, man. <laughs> Okay. When there's like absolutely nothing left in the on the shelves, and it's like, okay, you can either have a whole thing of milk, or you can have a cottage cheese, or you can have cream cheese. And I'm like, but I really want chocolate milk <laughs> and sour cream. Oh my gosh! So which one did you pick? I picked the uh, cream cheese because <laughs> I bought a thing of bagels, and I'm like, okay, I need the cream cheese for the gosh. bagels. Oh man, I didn't know. That. I, I I never expected that. I know uh, the Dollar General store up here is uh, they limit their toilet paper. You can only buy three packs of TP per person, which is good. It's fu- yeah, it's fine. Whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was I was kind of pissed off because they had like look. I guess the social distancing thing. It's it's worth it. It's important. Make sure people doesn't get sick mm-hmm. or don't get sick and stuff like that. I get it. Mm-hmm. I understand you don't want to get in big groups of people because if one of you has it, you're all fucked. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it doesn't matter. But I hated it because I walked into the dollar store and they have the tape on the floor. Every six feet, they have a strip of tape. I like that. That says social distancing six feet. I'm like, come on. Do we really need this? I got mad at a lady because she wasn't standing on the tape. I was like, hey, 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 tape on the ground. Come on. 
What are you doing? This is Walgreens for crying out loud. I, I was like the polar opposite because my mom was working behind the counter of the dollar store and I walked right in between the two pieces of tape to hand or something. And there, it was kind of funny at the reaction of this one lady because she like, she like held her hands back. She was like, oh my God. And it's like, I'm not diseased. Come on. Not that I know of anyway. Nothing that's contagious at least. Hey-oh. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder, I seem to have a very dumb effect on people, but whatever. Right. It po- Point is, I mean, I'm staying home as much as I can and whatever, 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 you know, I just, I just don't like being told what to do. That's my thing. I just don't like, I just don't like walking into a store and seeing tape being like, you have to stand here. It's like, uh, whatever. I just don't like it. That's just me though. I live in an old part of town. Not, not an old as in like uh, classic buildings and whatnot. No, I mean like, uh, I, I live like right next to like full retirement communities that all have oh, can- Canadian flags outside. And I'm just like, fuck off snowbirds. <laughs> and so when I, um, when I go to the store, it's like, okay, well I normally go to the store at ones that are like 24 hours. And I'm like, cool, sweet. I can go in here and not be bothered by like the general public as it would be. And, but today I actually made the journey out at reasonable time to go to the store. And I'm like, there's too many old people here. (laughs) I was just like, God damn it. People go home, go back to Canada. I don't want you here. Go back to Montana, go back to Washington, go back to Minnesota. Get, you know, there's, there's one thing I've noticed up here and sorry to interrupt, Mm -hmm. but, uh, I just wanted to point out that there's one thing I've noticed up here in my area where there are, I'm kind of like you, there's a lot of uh, retirees up here, a lot of older people. Uh, They're local, Mm -hmm. but a lot of people do come here because it's, for some reason, it attracts old people. I don't know why, but it does. Makes for peaceful living, but whatever. So, Mm -hmm. it's the older fucking people that are out there that are buying shit up, that are uh, causing the problems. From my point of view, they're the ones that are the issue. And then they look at us and be like, oh, how dare you young people go out and spread the spread this crap. And I'm like, I'm staying at home. You're the one that's always going out to the store. You're the one yeah. that's wearing the masks, yeah. even though you don't have to, wearing the gloves and being all this BS paranoid. I don't even get it. I don't know. Well, it's like, you know, like we're all used to going out. So we we're used to, you know. Now, if we don't have to go out, we, we all can kind of manage it. How many times do you hear about people who are well well retired, and then guess what? Next thing you know, they're like, nah, this job is just here so I can get out of the house. Well, bleh. You know, it's like, go, yeah. don't do that. Get back in the house and go stay there. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. God forbid. Well, one of the, one of the kind of the sad things about it, though, is... I know a lot of older people personally. They don't that they don't like to stay home. Mm-hmm. They hate it. Mm-hmm. They like to be out, mm-hmm. but that's really dangerous for them right now. So you in a, a lot they just a lot of people just a lot of older people they like to go out because I they will literally go to that store because my mom works there, so mm-hmm. she tells me they will literally go to the store every single day to pick up like their meals for that day. And she has people that will go in there without fail two or three times a day, every single day. But I think they do that because they don't like to be home. But of course, with everything going on, it it really sucks whenever they do that because they're being a part of the problem. Yeah. But we've already harped on it, so it doesn't matter. If you want to, t- anyway. if you want to, if you want to look at that topic, it's been beaten into the ground by everybody else in the world. So go look it up somewhere else. And by the time my editing rolls around, it'll probably be all over anyway. This episode's probably going to come out in December. Let's not aim for that. <laughs> uh, I, let's aim, let's aim a little out. higher, my friend. Let's aim a little higher. Be a little optimistic exactly. now. Come on. All right. Anyway, so. Uh, speaking of things that keep us all indoors, movies, or at least things that I've been watching on Netflix. Yeah, what do so, you got? Um, so my friend, uh, one of my roommates has been going on about uh, the new Trigger anime called uh, Brand New Animal. Okay. Uh, or BNA for short. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, so I haven't given a crap about it. Not because I'm, you know, not interested, but I tend to not go after animes that aren't finished yet 
So Mm -hmm. it's like, I wait till the actual show is done. So that way I can be like, okay, great, cool. It's done. Yeah. Now I can enjoy it. Or at least it's on its last episode or something like that. Yeah, I can agree. So, so when it's like, oh yeah, brand new animal, this new anime from the studio trigger, I'd be like, oh, trigger. Yeah. I like trigger. Let's go back and watch kill a kill. So (laughs) yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm currently running back through kill a kill again. And uh, I think it was last night or the night before I just finished the um, uh, the school raid arc. Okay. And now uh, they're getting back to sort of I don't I don't I don't remember what comes next. Luckily enough, um, I I watched all of Trigger, or I'm sorry, all of Kill a Kill a while ago, but it's been so long that I don't really remember exactly what everything happens. I mean, I I, I remember the like key points yeah. and whatnot. I just don't remember the uh, the episode by episode stuff. So going back and watching it, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was this part. And oh, yeah, he did do that. And I'm like, huh, this is a good anime. Nice. And then I finished um, uh, the new season of Altered Carbon, which I was extremely pleased with. And I've just been like, ooh, 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 this is good. This is good. This is good. I like this. I like this. And I'm just like, all right, all right, all right. Fine, fine, fine. And it... It, it's a really good anime or not really good anime well there actually is an animated an anime movie that they made but the the season i finished is live action and it's american and made yeah. in english and blah 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 so it's not an anime um but yeah it, it was really good christopher mackie christopher mackie no anthony mackie anthony mackie hold on google save us no that's joel that was li- oh anthony mackie okay. sorry <laughs> So Anthony Mackie um, did actually a really good job on it. You know, he he's the same guy who played um, the the Falcon in the Marvel movies. All right. And, and normally, like the movies that I've seen him in, have all been like sort of upbeat character uh, movies. But you know, him in this movie, it's a lot of uh, I got to do what I got to do, and uh, I have to. You know, it doesn't matter what you feel. I have to make sure that this. Uh, the gang is going to come by and kill everybody if I don't. And I'm like, huh. Sounds like, sounds like a real okay. lord. It, it's just like, it's, it's just really good. I just really, really liked what he did. They are. Right. Um, I mean, it was, it's interesting. Have, have you, have you seen any of Altered Carbon at all? No, I have not. So the premise of this world is the fact that the, or have I actually explained it before? I don't believe so. Okay, so quick rundown for the people who don't know. The premise of this world in or the the world that Altered Carbon lives in is that they have these like chips or not really a chip. It's more like a like a plate or like a it's a thing. It's it's a it's like a coaster sized thing that like is in a person's neck that sort of uh remembers and uh holds on to an entire person's memories and life and everything. So if someone like dies, like they get shot in the head, um, they can, their conscience can get, can be taken out of that body and placed in a different body. Okay. So, um, people are able to, you know, essentially live forever. There's some side effects and blah, blah, blah later on. And it's like, how many, how many different bodies have you had? Oh, I've had about 16. And it's like, oh my God, you're, you're suffering and you're doing whatever and blah, blah, blah. And there's like actually some, they don't live forever, forever, but they live long enough um, to the point that also this, uh, this new society that this shut up phone, um, this new society that the world lives in also uses this as an excuse to sort of, um, they also use it sort of as a, as a prison sentence as well. Um, If you get captured, your essentially your mind can essentially be taken out of your body and left to sort of serve its sentence in either on ice or in a digital world where like, okay, that's where they're meant to go serve their sentence. And then after X amount of years, they're put back into an actual living body. Well, it follows the story of this guy named uh, Takeshi Kovach, uh, who used to be the soldier for sort of this integral army, because at this point, um, human beings have journeyed out among the stars and whatnot and blah 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 so um we're starting to need intergalactic army military whatever blah 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 um 
And this guy, Takesh Kovacs, used to be this really good soldier. So it was like, okay, great, whatever. And then eventually he was sort of turned around and now he worked. And then he worked for a, um, a uh, sort of like humans weren't meant to have this. We need to return to the way we used to be sort of guerrilla okay. army, whatever thing and this is all in the past and then he wakes up and then he's got to go do this thing and there's a whole thing that happens in the first season and a whole different story that happens compartmentalized in the second season and and it's interesting because the body that Takeshi is running around in the first season with is sort of important to that season so and then at the end of the season he has to sort of like ditch the body and go someplace else hence why the Mac is in the second season as Takeshi Kovach. The first one was played by this white guy who is in a couple of different things. I can't remember who, or I can't really remember a thing that he's been in, but um, uh, then the second season is played by Takeshi Ko or <laughs> it's played by Takeshi, it's played by Anthony Mackie, okay. who then um, is obviously a whole different body. Um, and it's, it's just really interesting. How it's like, okay, it used to be this guy, and now it's a different dude, and now it's another guy. And, and it's just like, oh, man, it, it, it's interesting. It's a new, different thing about, like, sort of living forever and not, you know, having to stress these things. Huh. That's pretty interesting. I don't know. So, season two is really good. And there's an anime movie that also came out that I need to watch, but that was... I got pulled into something else, and I can't remember what, but... Okay. You know. That sounds like a really cool concept. I like that. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he was Rick Flagg in uh, Suicide Squad. Oh. The first season, Keshi Kovacs. Okay. He was also the RoboCop, and a couple of other things as well. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I, uh, I need to find something to hold me over for uh, for my next anime. I don't, uh, I don't really seem to be able to find one. I, I can't really, uh, oh. I can't find a good one because I just, I watched a lot of animes that came out like a while ago because I just finished uh, No Game No Life and I tried to go into Survival Games Club uh, after I got done with that. It just absolutely did not grab my attention. It's not a bad anime, but it just does not grab my attention. Have you tried the 42 animes that we talked about on episode 8? Yeah, I'll, I'll, have, I'll have to go back and I'll have to look at those another peek behind the curtain. So I, I downloaded an, uh, an image for each separate anime we talked about in that whole, like, Hey, this is what I've been watching thing. And I swear to God, I've got like so many pictures that I used in that episode there. When we eventually stopped talking about anime and started talking about everything else, I was like, no, I'm fucking done. I'm done. I'm just going to move on and not, I'm not looking back. I'm done with putting <laughs> pictures to things we're talking about. Once we started talking about actual like English stuff, I was like, nope, you know exactly what this is. We're talking about the Sonic movie. We're done. I had to tweet at uh, uh, Igor and be like, hey, what was that anime you said with the thing with the Monosuda Kata whatever? And he's like, oh, you mean Monosuda Kodori? And I'm like, that's the one. Oh, and I'm man. like, oh my God. You'll be happy to know that I put both the English names and the Japanese names for these animes in the um, in the actual an in the episode. Yeet, that's nice. Awesome. It was like I I had such a hard time trying to find everything, and <laughs> oh, man. it was like these names for half of these animes. I'm like, why are they gonna be so freaking long? I don't know why they're so long, but uh, it's like they're trying to shove exposition into the title itself. <laughs> I mean, whatever, it works. <laughs> so, uh, that we also should have been paying attention to as well over these last couple of episodes was the hashtag Ask the Maybe Pile as well. Dirt? Yeah, so uh, it turns out we actually had a uh, question that came in. Um, I'm so used to, like, people tweeting at me directly, being like, hey, at Mumbified, uh, Mumbified Tony, uh, blah, 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 blah. And I'd be like, oh, hey, yeah, cool, whatever that I forget that I actually have to actively go out and check a hashtag or I haven't set it up so that I follow this hashtag anymore. Right. So uh, we actually received a, uh, a question from an old friend of mine, Kiyo Yaoi. Uh, she, she says, 
Y'all mentioned you liked BoJack Horseman in episode two. With the show recently ended, what were your thoughts for on the last season, and did you relate to the characters in any way? Favorite episode and so forth. I I I have not seen. I think the last two seasons of BoJack. the The last season I saw was the one where he goes off to New Mexico, spends that time with his friend uh, down in New Mexico, lives on their, or no, he buys the boat and lives there. I can't exactly remember, but that's where I last left off. And um, I, I, I got to say, like, I don't know if it was so much the, the my favorite episode was the one that he, he starts working out and he starts running up the hill and whatnot. And then, uh, the um, monkey guy is like, it gets easier, but the hard part is you got to keep doing it. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily my favorite episode or just my favorite line from the entire show, but that just sounds like a metaphor for life. Yeah, and that's exactly how it's kind of pitched. It's like, yeah, it gets it gets easier, but the hard part is you got to keep doing it. And it's like, man, I was like, it was it, it struck me as like both like the implication like the literal implication of it with like having to work out all the time which by the way i hate the fact that my gym is closed right now i can't get my workouts in uh but also like no excuses get down on the floor crunches i know i know i know tell me about it uh but also i really like the fact that of what it presented for the actual um analogy and sort of metaphor that it also brought out um i don't know it's, it's kind of sad that like my favorite episode probably is the last episode from the um what was it the like the latest season that i saw where um spoiler uh things go bad for bojack like a lot you know you, you, it it gets real sad at some points and it's almost like the sadder the episode gets the more i enjoy it and my favorite episode was probably the one where he like and I can't remember if I'm actually getting them mixed up or whatnot, but it's it's a mixture of the episode where, I guess more of just a moment again from an episode where he, at one point Bojack is just driving down this open country road and he just like, like starts, puts his foot flat on the gas, closes his eyes and just lets his arms go. And just like, he's, he's like about ready to kill himself but then eventually does grab the wheel at the very last second and then sees these wild horses um, uh, roaming and whatnot, and he kind of, like, gets that spiritual connection. And I can't remember if that happens after the um, fallout between his friend in New Mexico or not, and I can't remember, but it was just, like, that... It just sucks that I like BoJack, the show BoJack Horseman, so the most when it gets so incredibly sad like the moments where it's like the worst for bojack is the best moments for me and i don't know why that is i don't know maybe maybe you're just drawn to the to more emotion maybe maybe to the more emotional parts of this of the show maybe yeah maybe it's just the emotion that you that you're attracted to i don't know and it's not like a schadenfreude sort of thing. Like I'm getting enjoyment or I'm getting pleasure from the idea of Bojack's struggle or anything like that. Uh, it just catches your eye, I assume. I don't know. It just, it resonates with me. Obviously, I have zero parallels that draw between me and Bojack. I was not, you know, I was not uh, on a very popular famous TV show back in the 90s. I, I do not live <laughs> in a house in Hollywood and I'm not a raging alcoholic. I don't have a drug problem i don't have um aaron pratt li- uh, crashing on my couch or anything like that i don't have an a, few ass- of those, a few of those things sound kind of fun though oh yeah you know i would love to have aaron pratt crashing on my couch but then again i know that he has a very nice house on his own so it's like aaron go 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 to your house dude i was more referring to the house and house in hollywood but yeah you know towards eh. the road. i don't know if i'd want that or not maybe not hollywood but i would love a gargantuan house that'd be pretty sweet i would want just a kooky house it doesn't have to necessarily be large (laughs) but i'm one of those people that like look at like shipping container homes and i'm like yeah i want that i am the uh opposite of minimalist i love to live lavishly i don't know why but i just do 
So I'm naturally attracted to larger, larger things, larger luxury cars, larger homes, etc., etc. You name it, I like right. it. The jewelry I uh, have designed is also extremely large as well. Like the pendants are rather large, the rings are large as well. They're not like comedically, you know, plastic wrapper ring large, but they're they're noticeable. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, but uh, to, to backpedal for just a sec, I don't remember ever saying that I saw the show. If I if I did, then I must have not heard what you were talking about. It, it, I mean, it's fine. But, I don't uh, know. Uh, it doesn't matter. Who knows? It doesn't matter. But I, I picked up I pick up what you're putting down about you know how you resonate with it. Yeah, that, that makes more sense. I think uh, I think us as humans are probably just more attracted to tragedy. That's what I think. It's kind of like mm-hmm. why people kind of stare at a car crash you know you're not supposed to stare but you stare anyway you know whether it be a physical car crash or something else or they look up um car uh accident dash cam videos i've never really done that but i can see why people do it oh my god there are times on facebook i'll just be scrolling through another one Another one. Another one. God, this guy's an idiot. God, this guy's an idiot. That's why you don't do that, you idiot. Another one. Yeah, that that's our uh, one question that's been left over for the hashtag Ask the Maybe Pile. Um, if you have any questions, uh, uh, audience at home, not UK, you can literally ask, ask me anytime. Uh, if you have any questions at the at home, obviously, uh, you can always uh, tweet at us and use the hashtag Ask the Maybe Pile, and we will go ahead and remember to check these things on the next episode good to be back in the swing of things yes yes we need to get back into a routine we haven't recorded for like three weeks uh, as of as of this recording right here that you're listening to we have not unfortunately we have not recorded for like three weeks due to everything that's been happening mm-hmm. and trying to set up work and schedule conflicts and everything else that you okay. could possibly imagine also it's not just that it's also the fact that i've been sick for the last two weeks as well that doesn't help either like i've ha- I've had a cough, all right? So if people are just like, wow, they're really lazy. It's like, okay, I've also had health concerns, okay? And I'm lazy. I'll leave that up for him, but yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a lazy bastard, but I get my shit done, damn it. Yeah. Well, cool. Fantastic. Uh, like I said, yeah, uh, feel free to tw- uh, use the hashtag. Tweet at us, at MaybePilePod, and we'll be, it will be around. You can ask and do and interact with us any yes. way you want. Uh, like I said, thank you to everybody who who listens, who watches, likes, comments, subscribe. Thank you for all of it. It really it really is awesome to see the interaction uh, with the videos and everything else. Uh, I think we should try to find someplace else uh, to upload the podcast. We'll Excuse work me, on upload that. Upload the podcasts, but I'll look into it. I think a Spotify would be nice. Yeah. All right. Uh. Well. I really don't have anything else. We've been going for an hour and 11 minutes, according to my uh, audacity. Let's call it there, then. Alrighty, then. So, uh, yeah, thank you to everybody who listens, and uh, for subscribing, especially. Uh, Please uh, lend us your thoughts in the comment section down below. You can check us out on Twitter, at at MaybePilePod. I believe I got that right. Uh, MaybePilePod. At maybe pop pod at Mofi Tony at Kiryoku writes and uh, hashtag ask the maybe pile if you want any questions answered if you don't want to tweet us directly yo have hit you, me up whatever. on Xbox Live mummified T oh god <laughs> mummified and the letter T if only I wasn't a PlayStation player all right I know actually I prefer PlayStation anyway thank you all for listening you have the Twitter you have everything. Uh, please tell us if you have any questions or ask us any questions. And uh, you have your sloth, sir. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, good night, everybody. Good night.